Okay, so welcome back to the efficiency of a heat engine. Uh, we have everything set up right here. We're going to go through all the different parts of the system so you can write your procedures and, your, and we'll tell you what each of the, the pieces of uh, equipment is called. There's a hot plate here. Uh, There's a beaker. Temperature, we have two temperature sensors. One going to the hot reservoir and then the other one going to the cold reservoir. Uh, we also have a rotary motion sensor right up here, and it has about 48 grams on it because the piston inside the cylinder that's actually going to be doing the work in lifting this 200 gram mass, that is the same mass as the piston. So there's no lifting of the piston. The piston is weightless because we're counterbalancing it uh, with the rotary motion sensor. And then the rotary motion sensor keeps track of where the piston is as it's driven upward and downward by placing this can in either the coal reservoir or the hot reservoir. Okay? So right now it's sitting in the coal reservoir. And since the temperature is not going to change, we're going to do what's called an isothermal process, which means I'm going to take this mass right here and I'm going to put it on here and it's going to compress the gas. When it does that, the gas would like to heat up, but since it's in communication with the coal reservoir, that heat that would be created, it goes right out into the coal reservoir. So we call that process isothermal. Then once it's in there in its lowest state, so by, by the way, it's below the two centimeters initial state that we talked about in the previous uh, preview. So now it'd be at a negative position uh, relative to 2.0. So you remember the rotary motion sensor always starts from zero. So we have to add two the two centimeters on there to correct for it. So in capstone, we put that formula that's on the board so when we can get the volume directly rather than looking at the position of the rotary motion sensor. And then lastly, the most important part is the pressure sensor. And the, and the pressure sensor is called a dual pressure sensor. We're only using one of the two pressure sensors. But it's a very, high, uh, a very high data rate pressure sensor. It can take 1,000 measurements per second. And uh, so we have capstone set up for 1,000 measurements a second, along with the rotary motion sensor, which is also taking 1,000 measurements per second. And the temperature probes are set to degrees Celsius. You can see the temperatures on the screen right here. Uh, the hot bath is at 90.7, and the cold bath is at 4.2 uh, centimeters. So the way this thing works is this is sitting down in that lower left-hand corner. The pressure is the pressure of the room. The temperature is whatever the cold bath is at right now. And then the corresponding volume uh, agree, uh, is, is, at set at two, is was set originally at two centimeters. So this whole setup was opened up to the air and then adjusted to two centimeters and then closed with the tubes. And now the air is trapped in the system. But the outside pressure of the world can push on this piston here, lifting it up and down. So when we have an isobaric process, which means the pressure doesn't change, that's what will happen when we move this over into the hot bath. So heat will then flow into the system and, and will increase the volume of the gas as the pressure remains constant, okay? As the temperature remains constant. So that temperature difference from going from the cold bath to the hot bath will create a volume, a change in volume, but not a change in pressure, okay? So if you come over here, I'll show you what the computer looks like and the uh, 850. So, uh, but first right here, you can see the piston inside the cylinder right here. It's set at two centimeters and it's free to move up and down if you put heat on it or you let, a, let heat flow into it or it'll go down if like you put this mass on there, you can see it'll go down to a lower state. And it's still though, at the 4.2 degrees Celsius. It's a real problem getting this mass out once you get it in there. All right, so now I went back to the two centimeter uh, state right there. 
and you can see these are the two temperature probes. This is the rotary motion sensor, and this is the dual pressure uh, sensor. On, pat, on, on the computer screen, I got it set for one kilohertz uh, for the, uh, the data rate, how, much, how fast the data is coming in, 1,000 measurements per second. And over here, we set the, the calculator. We put the equation for the volume in there that was up on the board. And so that is then put right on the screen. So you just click on the, the x-axis of the graph, which is volume, and you go to the bottom here, it says volume, and it'll keep track of the volume on the x-axis, and then the y-axis is set to pressure. And we're constantly monitoring, monitoring the temperature as we go along. Nothing's happening now because I haven't pushed record yet. Okay? And um, basically, it's ready to go. So just to recap, what we're going to do is, this is sitting at a cold temperature. We're going to put the mass on there. It's going to compress the gas. The gas would heat up if it wasn't in communication with the coal reservoir. So whatever heat is generated by compression will then uh, conduct over to the coal reservoir. So this is an isothermal process. The volume will go down and, and um, the, vo the volume will, will go down and the, uh, uh, hang on one second here, and the pressure will go up, okay, when I do that, to keep the temperature constant. So I'm going to put that right, uh, I need to turn on the, the computer first. Let me get rid of this. All right, so here we go. I'm going to push collect. Wait, let me, wait, I want to just, <laughs> so I want to describe the other three, uh, three steps. So once this thing gets pushed down, coal reservoir, we're then going to move this guy over to the hot temperature, and that will heat the gas, but since this is in contact with the outside world, the pressure will remain constant, but the volume will increase. And it'll increase all the way to the point where that change in temperature has produced enough heat that it lifted it as much as it can. Okay, now it's at the high point that I'm going to take it off of there. And when I take it off of there, it's still sitting in the hot bath. And this whole thing will want to expand like that now because there isn't that added pressure of the weight sitting on there. So the volume will increase, but the temperature will remain constant because the, the can is still sitting in the hot reservoir. All right. And then lastly, we're going to take the can out of the hot water, put it in the coal reservoir, and that temperature difference is going to make the gas contract in volume, and negative work will be done now on the gas as the volume goes down. But the temperature won't change. Pressure, I'm sorry, the, the temperature won't change because it's in contact with the cold reservoir. So as the volume goes, as the volume goes down, the uh, pressure stays constant, the temperature's going down. So temperature, you know, PV equals NRT. Volume's going down, temperature's going down, pressure's staying constant. Number of gas molecules is staying constant. By the way, you can determine the number of gas molecules by taking any point on the PV graph and calculating what the number of moles is for a certain temperature, pressure, and volume. So when it's on one of those isothermal paths, you can just get a data point on there, you know the temperature, don't forget to change it to Kelvin, and you know the pressure and volume, you can calculate the number of moles. You're going to have to do that with your data. That's one of the, cal one of the steps in the calculation. So now we're just going to do it now. So it's got to happen fast. All right, so I, when I push collect, it'll just sit in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen until I do something. So you can see there's a little, uh, hold on one second. Why is there two guys? Let me go and pause just for a sec.